Hello everyone, myself Dr. Dhani Shasan, Chiyatri, Department of Radio Diagnosis and my co-author is Dr. Moshid, Senior Resident of Department of Radio Diagnosis from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Aligarh Muslim University. The aim of my case study is to study a rare disease in a young child with a developmental delay. Coming to the history of the patient, a 14-year-old presented with a difficulty in speaking since birth with a history of frequent falls while walking since one year and a developmental delay is present. There is no history of any abnormal movements, seizures, trauma, fever. Prenatal, natal and postnatal history are insignificant. Coming on to clinical examination, on general examination, the child is normal built with no pallor, ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy and edema with normal vitals. Sleep and appetite is normal. Bowel and bladder control is normal. Coming on to CNS examination, the child is conscious, oriented to time, place and person. Speech was slurry and a dysarthric with writing is normal and memory is normal. On motor and sensory examination was found to be normal with no postural sign was present. There is no cerebellar or meningeal signs noted. On investigation, on routine blood investigation was found to be within normal limits. EEG was within normal limits. NCCT head was advised. On axial section of NCCD head shows a cleft in bilateral frontal lobe extending from subarachnoid space into bilateral lateral ventricle. Also noted absent septum pellucidum. On coronal section, on coronal section of NCCD head shows a cleft extending from bilateral extending from bilateral frontal lobe into the lateral ventricle with absent septum pellucidum was noted. On coronal section of T1 and a T2 weighted MRI brain shows a CSF cleft lined by thickened and irregular gray matter extending from subarachnoid space into the lateral ventricle with absent septum pellucidum noted. On coronal section of T2 weighted MRI shows a CSF cleft lined by thickened and irregular gray matter extending from the subarachnoid space into the lateral ventricle with absent septum pellucidum was noted. This image reconstruction shows normal bilateral optic nerve and bilateral optic chiasma. A MR angiography of the brain appears normal. Hence, a diagnosis on MRI is closed scission scapulae with absent septum pellucidum with normal basal ganglia and normal optic chiasma. The final diagnosis of the patient is bilateral closed scission scapulae with absent septum pellucidum. Uh, coming on to the introduction part, Skysen Kepali do a rare congenital disorder with incidence of 1.5 per 1 lakh population and 1 in every 1650 among the children suffering from the epilepsy do occur in our environment. It should be considered an infant presenting with the seizures. Majority of the cases are thought to be sporadic with no gender prediction has been noted. Neuroimaging, especially MR in the children, should be asked to adequately assess this patient in spite of its high cost for good patient management. Coming on to the discussion part, Skysen Kepali is the literal meaning of the word split pain. The gray metal line cleft that extends from the ventricular ependymer to the pile surface of the cortex. Cleft spans the full thickness of the affected hemisphere. The the two types are documented. Type 1 are the closed lips where the walls of the clefts are opposed to each other and type 2 where the walls are separate from the each other. Type 2 is more common than the type 1 with the 60% of the unit of the skysen capillary being of the open type. The clefts could be bilateral or unilateral, symmetrical or asymmetrical. It can occur anywhere in the brain. It is however more common in the parietal and the frontal lobe, especially in the region of sylvian fusion. Skysen capillary is often associated with other congenital abnormalities such as 50-90% to 90 of the cases are associated with agencies of septum pellucidum, corpus callosum and polymicrogyria which is excessive number of small partly fused gyri, pachygyria which is unusually thick convolution of the cerebral cortex and heterotropia cell which is ectopic gray matter and it can be associated with the septo optic dysplasia and optic nerve hypoplasia. Coming on to clinical presentation, the patient can present with seizures, hemiparesis, mental retardation, delayed milestones, motor defects. Patient with the type 1 are often almost normal. They may have seizure and spasticity. In type 2 abnormalities, there is usually mental retardation, seizures, hypotonia, spasticity and inability to walk or speak and blindness. Coming on to radiographic features, Skysen capelli can sometimes be bilateral and it is divided into two morphological types. In open lip type, the cleft walls are separated and are filled with the CSF in, and it is the most common form in bilateral cases. In closed lip, the cleft walls are in opposition and it is the most common form in the unilateral cases. Most often, the cleft lip involves the posterior, frontal and the parietal lobes in about 70% of the cases and although the large clefts can extend to involve the temporal or the occipital lobes, isolated involvement of these lobes are uncommon.
Uh, coming on to CT scan findings, on CT scan, there will be a focal V-shaped outpouching or a dimple of CSF extending outward from the lateral ventricle and a dysplastic gray matter line in the cleft. These clefts can be unilateral, which occurs in about 60% of cases, or it could be bilateral, which occurs in about 40% of the cases, with a prominent open lip or barely visible, which will be a closed lip. Common associated abnormalities are absent septum pellucidae, which occurs in about 70% of the cases, and a focally thin or a disunited corpus callosum. Coming on to MRI finding. MRI is the imaging modality of a choice and enables identification of pile, ependymal cleft, as well as visualization of cortical dysplasia and a heterotrophic gray matter. In closed lip, which is type 1, seen as a nipple outpouching at the ependymal surface. In open lip, which will be type 2, heterotrophic gray matter lined CSF cleft seen extending from the ventricular to the cortical surface. And MR is more sensitive than CT, especially in delineating associated abnormalities such as cortical dysplasia, which includes polymicrogyria and a pachygyria and a heterotrophic gray matter. The cleft follows CSF signal intensity on all the sequences. DSA or CTA or MRA have demonstrated occlusion or absence of middle cerebral lot in some cases. And coming on to case scenario, in our case, who was a 14-year-old boy with a developmental delay with a difficulty in speaking since birth and a frequent falls while walking since one year, was diagnosed with a bilateral skysen cephaly with absent septum pellucidum. On prenatal diagnosis, increasingly skysen cephaly is being diagnosed antenatally or postpartum with a cranial ultrasound. Closed lip skysen cephaly is hard to identify, whereas open lip forms can, if a large, can be readily seen. Peter Skysen cephaly refers to Skysen cephaly diagnosed in utero. Usually, only open lip types can be diagnosed antenatally. On antenatal ultrasound, there may be a unilateral or a bilateral defect extending from the pile surface to a ventricular wall. They may be associated with other features such as absent K1 septum pellucidum or occasionally fetal hydrocephalus can be seen. On fetal MRI, fetal MRI is performed to confirm the cleft is a gray matter lined which distinguishes this entity from the foreign cephalic cyst. It is more sensitive at detecting the closed tip skysen cephaly than ultrasound. It is also used to confirm the presence of associated anomalies also. Now coming on to the management part. Management of both types of skysen cephaly is conservative. It predominantly consists of rehabilitation of the symptoms, that is, motor defects and the mental retardation and the control of the seizures. Surgery is undertaken in some cases where there is a hydrocephaly or intracranial hypertension, which most commonly occurs in the open lip form. This usually involves the insertion of the ventricular shunts. And these are my references. Thank you.